TU100 My Digital Life Sense and Sense Ability. The main aim of this video and exercise is to ensure that you are familiar with some basic ways in which blocks and stacks can be manipulated. Open Project 3, which contains the completed program from Programming Exercise 2. Immediately save the project as project underscore o3 underscore sol. In this exercise you'll not be building a new program, instead you'll be using the existing program as a basis on which to experiment with manipulating blocks and stacks. The first point to note is that you can move a stack around the scripting pane. Left click and hold down on the green flag block and you'll see that you can reposition the entire stack anywhere you like. Try this now. Next, note that instead of clicking on the green flag button to run the program, you can double click anywhere within the stack to run it. Try that now. Blocks can be detached from the bottom of the stack. Left click and hold down on the final move 55 steps block and drag it away from the stack. All blocks lower down in the stack, just one in this case, move as well. Remember a stack topped by a hat block, such as the green flag block, is called a script. So a program in Sense is made up of one or more scripts. I'm going to slow down the execution speed by sliding this controller to the left to make sure you see what's happening each time I run the program. When the green flag button is clicked, only blocks that are in the script topped by a green flag block are executed. Any unattached blocks are not executed, although they will be saved in the project alongside the attached blocks. Try this now. You should find that this time only three sides of a square are drawn, starting at the centre of the stage. The two unattached blocks are not executed. Click on the pointer on the stage, drag it away from the centre of the stage, and then run the program again. The initialization blocks, the go to block and the point in direction 90 block, ensure that the three sides of a square are again drawn starting from the centre of the stage and with the same orientation as before. You'll next investigate what happens in the absence of these initialization blocks. Blocks can be removed from inside a stack. Let's experiment by removing the two initialization blocks near the top of your script which make the pointer move back to the centre of the stage and point it in the right direction when the program starts. The technique you will use is one that's generally useful for removing unwanted blocks from a stack. First, left click and hold down onto your go to block and drag it and the blocks below it to a clear area of the scripting pane. Then left click and hold down on the show block directly beneath the point in direction 90 block. Drag it and the blocks below it to a clear area of the scripting pane. Now you've detached the two unwanted blocks from the script. Drag them out of the way. To reassemble the rest of the stack, left click and hold down on the show block again and reattach it and the blocks below to the script. Now drag the pointer away from the centre of the stage and again run the program. You should see that again three sides of a square are drawn, but this time they do not start at the centre of the stage because the block go to zero zero has been removed. Directly above the scripting pane is an icon representing the pointer, a red arrow with a blue line through it. You can click and drag on this icon to make both the icon and the pointer itself on the stage rotate directly changing pointer's direction, which is shown to the right of the icon. Do this now, setting the pointer's direction to something other than 90. And if you wish, you can later double click on the pointer icon above the scripting pane to set the direction back to 90 degrees. Now run your program again. This time you should be able to see the effect of removing the point in direction 90 block. The orientation of the three sides of the square has changed. The detached blocks, the go to 00, zero and the point in direction 90 are no longer required, so it's sensible to remove them from the scripting pane. To do this, you can either right click on the topmost unwanted block, that is the go to 00, zero block, 
and select delete or left click on this topmost block and drag both unwanted blocks to the palette on the left and choose one of these methods now to remove these two blocks. At this point you should have a script headed by the green flag block and an incomplete stack comprising the two move 55 steps and the turn 90 degrees blocks which are joined together but without a green flag block. An incomplete stack of blocks can itself be executed simply by double clicking anywhere within the stack. The ability to execute unattached blocks can be useful when developing programs to see how blocks work before attaching them to the script. Try this now by double clicking on this incomplete stack of two blocks. Pointer simply moves 55 steps and turns round and the previous drawn pen line is still visible. In fact even a single block that's unattached to a green flag block can be executed simply by double clicking on it. To try this, detach the turn clockwise 90 degrees block from the move 55 steps block in your incomplete stack. Then double click on your single unattached move 55 steps block and you should find that just this block is executed, resulting in the pointer moving forward by 55 steps. Furthermore, a block need not even be in the scripting pane in order to be executed. You can simply double click on a block in a palette. Find this glide block from the motion palette, but don't move it out of the palette. Still in the palette, set the input values to 1, 0 and 0 respectively. Double click on this block in the palette and you should see the pointer gliding for one second back to the centre of the stage. And as a final question, how can you remove all pen lines from the stage without including a block within a script to do so? Have a think about that, and that can be a very useful technique. Hopefully the last exercise has increased your confidence in the fact that Sense is very easy to use and very hard to break. You've also seen that it offers different ways to achieve the same thing. When new blocks or new ways of working in Sense are introduced, the main things you need to know will be set out. However, there may well be interesting variations that you will only discover by experimenting. And you should do this whenever your curiosity is aroused. Once you've worked through each exercise step by step as described in these videos or in the Sense Programming Guide, if you have the time, come back to the program to experiment further. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.